Welcome to the Biker Angle. Don't forget to hit the like button, and if you're not already subscribed, hit that button and that little bell to be notified when we post or go live. From Biker Dad, some of the finest people I've ever met in my life. Jarheads remember friends killed in motorcycle cr crash. CBS Newspath. Jarheads MC President Manny fought back tears as he talked about the crash that killed seven of his closest friends. Manny was riding in second position on a 15 motorcycle line in Randolph with his brothers and sisters from the Jarheads MC when a passing truck struck the group and killed seven riders. This is far worse than anything I've ever experienced in my life, Manny said. It was like nothing I've ever seen in my life. It was awful. He and his fellow riders rushed to create quick tourniquets in the moment, hoping to save their friends' lives. Jarhead's MC is a group of Marine veterans and their spouses who ride motorcycles together and raise money for local veterans groups. Some of the finest people I've ever met in my life, Manny said, we're all Marines. We're all veterans, Navy Corpsmen, and we're just a bunch of people trying to do good things. Three of the seven victims were from the South Shore. Husband and wife Joanne and Ed Corr were from Lakeville. The flag at their home flew half staff Monday in their memory. Two of the nicest people you will ever meet, Manny explained. Always there, always willing to support. Just an outstanding family, great people. Their neighbor, Esther Rickard, echoed the same sentiment. Great people, she said, very loving, they would do anything for anybody, just good people. Mike Farisi of Plymouth also died in the crash. He dedicated his life to service not only as a Marine, but as a Plymouth police officer as well. Mike was a straight shooter, his friend Phil Ryan told WBZ. You couldn't ask for a nicer guy. When he said he was going to do something, he does it. You always know where you stood with Mike. Jarhead's MC, President Manny Riberio, told WBC that his members will be affected by this crash for a long time. We're like family. He... His wife, Valerie, explained, it's not just a bunch of guys on bikes. Modesto, California. Authorities served search warrants Tuesday morning at a Modesto's Hells Angels Motorcycle Club and a home in Salida, the FBI confirmed. Officials representing the FBI, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, and police were seen around 11 a.m. going in and out of the motorcycle club. A beige building in the 720 block of 7th Street. At one point, a KCRA crew saw authorities take a black and chrome motorcycle from the building, load it onto a trailer, and haul it away. The FBI also confirmed authorities served a search warrant at a Salida home on Tamra Way, where there was a strong smell of marijuana. Officers were seen carrying large bags out of the house with what appeared to contain marijuana plants. Even though it's legal out there, they got to get theirs, you know what I mean? A <laughs> uh, strong smell of marijuana coming from the, this home on Tamara Way in Salida where officers, uh, again, were carrying large bags from the home. <laughs> they had to freaking uh, reinforce that, didn't they? Uh, Harold Chikrelius, longtime Cleveland Hells Angel member and suspect in infamous Sigley bombing, has died. This by Vince Rosigik. Harold, a longtime member of the Cleveland Hells Angels, died on June 11th. Services were held this past weekend. Harold, most notably, was one 
of two suspects in the infamous 1975 Sigley bombing, which was just one of the many bloody incidents propagated by the Angels and other motorcycle clubs in Cleveland during the, de the decade. On January 7, 1975, a suitcase bomb was left at the door of a Cleveland home, brought inside by 26-year-old Buddle Outfit, who was visiting the home. The bomb exploded seconds later, killing him, 21-year-old mother Marianne Sigley, and her 2-year-old son Michael. Three others were injured. Years later, Hells Angels members would say they thought a member of a rival motorcycle gang lived at that house. That was not the case. Harold and fellow Hells Angels Richard Amato were arrested and indicted for the bombing. Judge James McGrittick dismissed the charges against Amato and, based on that move, prosecutors withdrew the charges against Harold. Years later, the judge was approached in a bar by someone who he thought was a Hell's Angel, but who was actually an undercover ATF agent. We really appreciate what you did for us, the agent said. The judge responded by saying he should have asked for a bigger bribe and hadn't even collected the full amount yet. So he was bribed. He was indicted and in 1985 pleaded no contest. In writings, later in life, Clarence Crouch, a fellow Hells Angel member who turned state witness and testified in a series of tribunals against the club, claimed the model thought he was targeting an outlaw member and that uh, Harold was also responsible. It had been Har Harry's birthday that night and before the cake could be eaten, Crouch real, uh, says they realized Harry hadn't rolled his bones yet, which led Amato and Harry to exit the clubhouse on Ena Avenue, and Harry allegedly saying he'd have his bones before the cake got stale. Go figure. Five hurt in drive-by shooting outside North Linden Motorcycle Club by Mark Farichik. Five people were shot earlier Sunday in front of a North Linden motorcycle club that some residents want out of their neighborhood. Columbus police were called to 1767 Genesee Avenue just east of Cleveland Avenue at 4.48 a.m. on a report of a shooting. A police dispatcher said, The address is the home of the Toros Motorcycle Club whose logo is on the front door. Two victims were transported to Ohio Health Grant Medical Center and two victims were transported to Ohio Health Riverside Methodist Hospital. The dispatcher said the fifth victim was also taken to a hospital. Police said all five are expected to recover from their injuries. This again according to the police. Police identified three of the victims. They were two men, 37-year-old Howard Lipscone Jr. and 29-year-old William Taylor, and a women, woman, 25-year-old Mikael Williams. A man at the Toros Motorcycle Club who did not want to be identified said it appeared to be a drive-by shooting. He said one of the people shot was a club member but did not give a name. Police said victims told them a white crown uh, or white Ford Crown Victoria drove by and at least 10 shots were fired from the car. Ellen Chapman lives nearby and heard the gunshots. Chapman said she has already complained to the police in recent months about the Toros, who she said rev up their motorcycles and speed up and down the street. That ain't good. Usually neighborhoods love motorcycle clubs. The police said there's only so much we can do, Chapman added. <laughs> the motorcycle club's supposed to take care of the neighborhood. This motorcycle gang does not belong in this neighborhood, said Chapman, who with her husband Pat has lived in the North Linden neighborhood for almost 40 years. I want them to be respectful or get out. She said she's ready to write Mayor Angel Gittenther 
Her husband added, Mayor Giffner said, I'm cleaning Linden neighborhoods up. Well, it ain't getting cleaned up, they said. It's not fair to us, said Ellen Chapman as she started to cry. We're disabled. I think we deserve some peace of mind. Come on, guys, really? John Lathram, who leads the North Linden Area Commission, said he wasn't even aware of the Tauros until he received the news of the early morning shooting. Lathram said he plans to talk to the Columbus City's Attorney's Office about closing down the Motorcycle Club's headquarters. Well, now they're going to go after you. They're probably going to use zoning against you. He said police are doing what they can, but can't watch every second of every day. The Toro's building is owned by Refrigeration Systems Company, according to the Franklin County's auditor's website. The company is located across Genesee's Avenue from the club. Yeah, they're going to get you. In August 28, a man was shot and killed in the parking lot of the Toro's former club at 574 East 5th Avenue after an argument with another man over a motorcycle. Anyone with information about Sunday's incident in North Linden is being asked to contact the Columbus Police Department and Detective Darren Eagleoff. And you can find the phone number on, uh, you know, one of those articles. I'm not going to give out phone numbers on this stuff. But uh, anyway, a great new one here. A Beta Wisconsin. I always love their articles on their uh, Facebook page. Ever wonder where all this profiling and prosecution of bike clubs came from? Look back in history for some answers. Again, go to their Facebook uh, thing. It's awesome. A bait was feeling good in the 1980s. We had a successful run at changing or repealing unwanted laws. And in the spirit of goodwill, we wanted to express ourselves in a charitable way. Our first successful blood drive took place under the guidance of Abate Secretary Sue Sparks after the initial shock of 23 bikers walking through the front door of the Milwaukee Blood Center, the mood turned congenial. After donating, a party ensued at the Holiday Bar in Butler with food supplied by High Cutting's wife. It took three donations to earn a blood donor patch, the first donors on the way to attain an Apache were Sue Sparks, Mary Rotter, and High Cutting, Dana Schroner, Lori Anderson, Doug Washkenny, John Geiner, Tom Johnson, Geno Sparks, Dave Gaber, Jim Fisher, Mark Felsing, Ron uh, Polchek, Marlene, De uh, Debbie, Ron, <laughs> a lot of them are out there, man. And it goes on to say uh, Tony Pan and uh, Denny Doris. Uh, later that year, we had a successful uh, food drive for the St. Agnes Food Pantry in Butler. There were 62 bikes loaded with food items arriving at a church. A party in Frontier Park followed with food and drink. Special thanks to Denny Dortz and Turtle for coordinating things. High cutting for including the British Biker Cooperative to participate with Abate, Tom and Diane uh, Balistria, along with Dottie Fisher for working at the church to receive the food, and to all the members who donated. Along with the good vibes of the early 80s came a dark shadow that had caused a lot of us to sweat about what's on the horizon. It did not take long to find out. We were already aware of Robert, uh, Rep. Robert Walker's uh, Resolutions 82 and 220 calling for a federal strike force to investigate and prosecute outlaw motorcycle gangs. The problem was the resolutions made no differentiary uh, distinction between outlaw gangs and any other group of motorcyclists. At the same time, U.S. Marshal Les Smith began holding seminars on motorcycle gang philosophy Priorities, intelligence, clubhouse fortifications, and more. What are these seminars teaching police, he goes on. Police disrupted a gathering of bikers in the town of Holland, New York, in an operation aimed at funding outlaw gang members smuggling drugs into the country from Canada. A beta of New York members at the event hired an attorney. 
claiming a violation of constitutional rights, finding no drugs, police issued 113 minor traffic violation citations, in addition, two arrests for uh, possession of fireworks and carrying a weapon, a club concluded the operation. Based on a tip, the operation included 30 state troopers, some OPP officers, eight border patrol officers, an assistant district attorney, and probably some FBI, but they say that's unconfirmed. All this to check for identification, tattoos, and conduct field investigations. In Wisconsin, Lacrosse ABATE members Robin Hansen and Tom Troll Lane received a denial for a permit for a Toys for Tots event to run in conjunction with the annual Oktoberfest celebration. The request met with a favorable response originally, but Lacrosse Police Department Marilyn Fripp accused La Lane of lying about sponsorship for the event. He also accused Lane and Abate of having an alternative motive to bring cyclists to Oktoberfest and take over the city. This denial stemmed from an incident that happened in Fond du Lac after an Abate bike show the previous year. The persons involved attended the show, but they, the crime they committed happened after the show miles away from the event, yet Abate got the blame. Remember, this is a Republican that started all this. Soon, Motorcycle Magazine started the report about attacks on the Hells Angels MC with a new law named RICO, Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organization Act. It is an extremely broad-ranging piece of legislation intended to give the federal government extensive powers to act against persons and property alleged to be involved in criminal activity defined in law this federal law was uh, the basis for a similar law being introduced for in Wisconsin known as the Wisconsin Organized Crime Control Act. This Wisconsin proposal led to Abate of Wisconsin becoming a leading opponent to the measure. The stage was set for an upcoming hearing and Abate was ready in for the battle. They say return next week to learn about RICO and the Wisconsin version of the federal law and what we did to fight. But that is a hell of an article again. Again, great article, man. Great article, great article. You guys got to go over to uh, Abate uh, Wisconsin's Facebook page. They always have these articles out there. Again, they are freaking awesome. Awesome stuff, man. But uh, anyway, that is your biker news for this morning, and I'll talk to you guys later.